Today, we're gonna to be doing the biggest upgrade to our off-grid solar system we've ever done. Let me show you what we've got here first. At the heart here, we have got four 230 amp hour, six volt flooded lead acid batteries. Those are your basic golf cart batteries. We've got a 2000 watt Ames 24 volt inverter charger. We have got a Midnight Solar Classic 150 charge controller. And we've got the shunt that goes with the Victron battery monitoring system. Plus, we've got a fuse right here. That takes care of the inside of our system, but the outside of our system, check this out, right over here. We have got six 300 plus watt solar panels, and we're gonna be upgrading and expanding it all. Let me show you what we got. We have got a pallet of goodness right here. These are 100 amp hour battle born batteries. They're lithium batteries and going to be a major upgrade to our solar system. We've got eight of them. Let me just show you really quick how they come packaged. When you order them, they come like this and check it out. They are, they're light, right? This, I mean, this is a plastic bag. Bam, 100 amp hours at 12 volts right there. You can pick it up with one hand. Those things are so much lighter than flooded lead acid batteries. What do we got in here? Bam, bam, bam. Okay, we've got a uh, brochure information about their batteries right here on top. Nice, <laughs> thick foam protection thing. And then down inside right here, we've got the battery. Okay, you just, you just grab it by the plastic bag and pull it out. What's cool about it too, man, check it out. See how those are sitting? Just like that? No worries. It doesn't even matter. There is no liquid in there like a flooded lead acid battery, right? You've got to mount upright, otherwise it's all gonna spill out. There's no spilling on these, man. You can mount them any way you want. Let me show you what else we got to go along with those. This box of goodies right here came along with them. And we have a Bluetooth monitoring system. And uh, these are the charge controllers that they actually really recommend using. Oh, look at that, so nice. Let's see, right here, right? These are Victron uh, charge controllers right here. This is a 50 amp charge controller, five year warranty, nice, right? And check it out, they are come pre-programmed for the battery, so you don't even have to mess around with all the programming stuff. Then right here, this is the big one. This is the 70 amp charge controller right here. Got some cool merch as well in here. Some t-shirts for the family. Oh, look at that. Cool. And the back of the shirt there, lead is dead. Of course, in order to install our new batteries and new charge controllers, we gotta disassemble the old stuff. Let's start off by being safe and disconnecting the power. First things first, disconnect the solar panels. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Disconnect the solar panels. One and two. Beautiful. So no power coming into the solar shed. Let's go cruise on in and see what else we got to do. Next, let's go ahead and just turn the power off. Uh-oh. That means we lose our light. All right, that's gonna be hard to make a video with no light. Um, that's why we got this. We've got the Blue Eddy from Max Oak right here. Let's go ahead and turn this guy on. Turn on the AC on. Now we'll take our light right here. Plug it in. Ooh, did you see that? Man, we got some light. We've got two lights now. All right, so we've got the power turned off. Next, we need to disconnect all of this and take it down off of the wall. That inverter is not light, man. All right, we've got it all cleared off here. I'm gonna go cut some more OSB, make the shelf, and then we will start installing our new components. This right here is where 
we are going to be mounting everything. This right here is the shelf for the batteries. This is the compartment for the inverter. Charge controllers, fuses, bus bars, things like that will go on that side over there. Let's go ahead and get the batteries and the inverter in place, and then we can figure out how we're going to wire everything up. Wow, man, that looks cool. Doesn't that look pretty cool? It's not all about looks, though. There's some function behind the way I'm doing this. For one is we're going to make these 24 volts, so we're going to go from this positive to this negative, this positive to this negative, this positive to this negative, like that. And then we will connect all these together and all these together. And so basically setting the batteries up like this is the most efficient use of wiring. But there's also another thing. This inverter puts off heat all the time. Whenever it's like plugged in and working, which is all the time, 24 hours a day here in our homestead, this little bad boy is putting off a little bit of heat. That little bit of heat is gonna rise up through that space right there and the space in the very back right there and it's gonna rise up through these batteries. And you know what that's gonna do? It is gonna keep these babies a little bit warmer in the winter time. Their minimum operating temperature is negative four. So it gets below negative four sometimes here in North Idaho where we are, but we are in the shed and we have this little heat source right below them to keep them warm. Should we need to keep them a little bit warmer, all we have to do is enclose this area right here and then that inverter will keep them nice and toasty warm in the coldest parts of winter. Let's go ahead and open this guy up. This is the larger charge controller. We've got a little booklet. Cool. And a big fat booklet. But thankfully it's in a bunch of different languages. So let's see, English. Oh, it's only that for English. Sweet. And let's get this guy out of the box. Huh, cool. Oh, nice, man. Huh. I thought this was gonna be plastic just from the pictures, but this is not plastic. This is like cast aluminum or something. Sweet. Look at these giant cooling fence back here and super big lugs for your batteries or your uh, cables to go into. So this will be for our big array of solar panels. We have another smaller array that we're gonna be setting up here real soon. And it is actually gonna be controlled by this one right here. Only that much is English. Cool. Then this guy right here, again, this is aluminum or some kind of metal. Looks like aluminum probably. And uh, big cooling fans lugs for your batteries to connect right here and then your screws here lights right here tell you kind of what's going on you might be thinking that there's no display on those things that's true right there's no display you can't see anything on here but check it out man it's bluetooth so it all connects with your phone in other words you i could be in the cabin and check with Bluetooth out here and see exactly how much we're charging. And with this guy right here, we'll be able to see exactly what our state of charge is, how much power we're pulling out of the batteries, how much power we're putting in the batteries. That is a really cool monitor. So this guy right here pairs with this guy, pairs with this guy. And then in the Bluetooth app, you, have, you can see everything. You can program everything with the app as well. It's a pretty cool setup. Open up the battery monitor here. Another whew, hefty manual. But again, just a little bit of it is in English. All right, so not too bad. This right here is the shunt. This is what you hook the negative up to. And all of your negatives have to go through here. Okay, so we got that. We've got the cables in here. We've got the little computer right here bam little computer K 
Okay. And a little cover for it. Let's go see where we need to mount this bad boy. All right, so I'm thinking somewhere in here, this is gonna say load and chargers, battery only, okay? So the battery's gonna hook to that side. Our load and our chargers are gonna hook to this side right here. That'd be a good spot for it right there. Yeah. All right, so that'll work right there. Now let's check out our fuse, our main fuse here for positive. We've got everything placed basically where we want it. Now we need to wire all of the batteries together. These are 12 volt batteries and this is a 24 volt system, which means we need to wire these two in series, these two in series, these two in series, these two in series, and then wire them in parallel so that we get all of the batteries working together at 24 volts, which means we need to do a lot of cable cutting and crimping for the connectors. This is a double aught gauge cable here. This is really flexible, like welding cable, battery cable. So I cut a bunch of pieces right here that we're gonna put connectors on, and then they are actually going to join these two right here together. The way you add the connectors to these, it's really pretty simple. I'll show you how we do that right now. And I will put links to like all of the tools that we're using today, uh, the components for our solar system and things like that. All the links that you're gonna want are gonna be down in the description below. So you can go ahead and check out those tools and resources like that. All right, so what you're gonna do is you're just gonna take your uh, connector here and open that bad boy up. Make sure you get the size connector. This is double lock connector for double lock cable. All right, and what you're gonna do is just take it and figure out about how much you're gonna wanna cut off there. Then you're gonna take your knife or your stripper, whatever you're using, and you're going to cut it. Then you're gonna pull it off like that. Perfect, huh? All right. Then you can see here that it slips oop, uh, right on there beautifully like that. Then you're gonna take this really fancy crimping tool, put it on something very solid, like a stump. Put your cable in there like this, and you can see these has a flare on the end right here. You put it in there until the flare hits. Get it all lined up just the way you want it. Then hit it with a hammer. All right, so we got it started, right? It's the crimp is started. And so basically you're gonna hit it a few times until you hear it really change sound. And that's gonna tell you basically that you've got it crimped as far as it's gonna go. And so it really changed the shape of that right there, right? And that is, it is locked on there solid. Then we're gonna do the same thing to this side here. Go ahead and get it kinda how you want it. Notice here it gets a little longer, right? Cause it's, it's bent. All right, so we've got it basically how we're gonna connect it in there. Take this guy here and we kinda mark where we're gonna mark it. Yep, right about there. So you kind of, if you're, if you're making something small like this, you're going to want to pre-bend it before you actually put the connector on there because it's going to make it more difficult later when you're trying to bend it and it's just not working. You're going to wish you bent it prior. Okay, so we bent it some. Got it ready. Yep, they look good. Open this guy up. Put this guy in there. Slider forward all the way. Yep, just about like that. Don't hit your thumb. All right, here we go. We got her crimped. So bend just like that to a nice little U shape. So now we just do that to the rest of them and we'll have our connectors to get our batteries in series. Then we just bolt them together like this right here with the hardware provided by Battleborn. All right. And we'll just do that to the rest of those going up. Let me show you where we're at so far. We've got all of the batteries hooked up in series and parallel. We've got the negative hooked up. This will go up right up here nice and tight. Coming into our negative shunt here for the battery monitor. Okay, we've got our charge controller negatives hooked up to negative and up to negative here. Positive hooked up and positive hooked up. All right, these will be laid in there nice and neat. 
Then we've got our positive coming in to our 250 amp fuse. And then this, this cable right here going up and it's waiting to be connected to the positive side right here. And right now we're trying to install this guy. You have to drill a hole somewhere for it to go. And if you're like me and you don't have a small enough hole saw, they make this little, this little uh, cover thing for you. So you got this little guy right here. You just attach it with four screws. And then you snap on this little cover plate. There we go. Then this guy will fit right in there like that. And it just has this kind of big nut right here that hook screws onto the back to hold it in place there. And you got a couple wires and cables to hook up to it and it should be ready to go. So let me button this up. We'll hook up the power and see if we don't smoke anything. All right, we're ready now. Final connection right here. The positive battery cable to the batteries. Charge controllers are all hooked up. Positive to positive, positive to positive. Battery to fuse. Battery monitors hooked up. All hooked up here. Negatives to negatives, negative to inverter. Inverter is switched off. I think we're ready to go. If anything smokes, like usual, don't blame it on don't blame it on the company. I'm the one that did it. All right, here we go. Spark, maybe there'll be a spark. Okay, guys, let's just get ready for it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, there's a spark. You always gotta be ready for that spark, man. There's always a little, there's always a spark. A couple of days and a haircut later, we're back out here in the solar shed. We've got everything hooked up and working perfectly now. Let me show you what we did to the outside. Notice guys, oh, it got a lot colder here in North Idaho. It's chilly, man. It's been raining for a couple of days. Smoke coming out of the chimney. Yes, we've got a fire going today. You saw these panels earlier, but we've also added these four panels down here as well. So there's one, two, three, four panels. And if you're wondering how we built our racking system or our solar panel mounting system out of Unistrut like this, well, I made an entire video on how to build those things, and that link will be down in the description of the video as well. All of those panels add up to 3,200 watts right, on a perfectly sunny day. Which as you can see today is not a perfectly sunny day. But that's okay, our solar system is doing okay. So before I show you the final connections here and show you how it's actually working with the app, let me go ahead and tell you why we chose to go with Battleborn batteries. One of the main reasons is this right here, man. Designed and assembled in the USA. These are made in Nevada. There are a few other reasons that we went with Battleborn batteries besides the fact that they're made in Nevada. One is, is that of course they are lithium iron phosphate batteries. And these batteries right here, you can actually use 100% of the 100 amp hours per battery. So when we put all of these together like this, we have 400 amp hours at 24 volts, which means we can use all 400 amp hours from these batteries. These batteries right here were 230 amp hours at 24 volts, but you could only use 50% of that, right? So that is like 115 amp hours. This is 400 amp hours, okay? And so of course we doubled the number of batteries, but we pretty much almost quadrupled our storage capacity with these guys. So that'll let us go a lot longer in between sunny days. Another thing is, is that you can charge these things at like five times faster than lead acid batteries. And they have a three to 5,000 cycle lifespan, meaning that's like 10 years, right? If you cycled these things every 10 years, meaning charged them all the way, drained them all the way, every day they're gonna last almost 10 years. We're not gonna do that. These are gonna last way over 10 years in our system, but they're rated for 10 years. That's just a few of the reasons we chose to go with Battleborn. I will put a link down to them and you can read all about their batteries and check out reviews and see how other people are using them besides just us down in the description below. So we've got our panels coming into the solar shed right here. Two sets of wires because we have two solar panel arrays coming up through the floor here behind the OSB. 
and then coming out this hole right here into the charge controller. And this is in bulk mode right now, meaning it's charged into the max. The other ones come up behind the OSB through this hole and they come into the bigger charge controller and it's charging at bulk right now as well. This guy right here has one wire coming out of the back of it. And that's this gray wire right here plugged into here. It's basically just a network cable. It looks like a large phone jack plug. Then you've got this little red wire right here that's plugged into here and goes to the positive side right here. It just doubles back in there and comes back out to the shunt. And so that's basically how we've got it all wired up. Of course, don't forget about the fuse and the fuse cover here. So how's it been working? We've been going a couple days now. We've had a couple days of rain. Right, as you can see, it is all wet and muddy out here now. We've got kind of mostly cloudy skies. So let's see how the system is doing using the app. We just go right here to the app, click that guy, and it opens right up. So right now our batteries are at 57%. If you notice right down here where it says power, that says 166 watts right now, right? That means that we are putting 166 watts into our batteries. We're not actually taking power out of the batteries. So that means that our solar panels are producing enough for whatever we're using in the house, plus they're producing extra to charge up our batteries. All right, so... Let's look at the charge controller here. Let's look at the small charge controller first. And so the small charge controller is producing 140 watts at 62.89 volts, right around there, okay? It goes up and down with how much sun it's actually getting, how thin the clouds are and stuff like that. So that's good, right? That's almost everything that's going into the batteries right now, right? So let's go look at the big one big charge controller that's our six solar panels and we're producing 305 watts right now at 76 volts now that may not sound like a lot but remember that's what we're looking at today right we're gonna get some sun probably in just a little bit as these clouds move over but we can also charge it with our generator and i'll show you how that works okay when you look back here it's pretty dark but you can see those three wires all the way in the back back there. Those three wires connect to the generator. When we start up the generator, it's gonna back feed through here, through here, through here, and come into the batteries. So let's go ahead and I'll show you how that works. First of all, we go ahead and plug in the inverter because we actually wanna use it right now. And then we'll go ahead and start the generator. So the generator is running, it'll take just a second and you'll see this switch over to from inverter mode to fast charge mode. Look at that. All right, here we go. So now let's go ahead and check the app and see what we're actually producing here. All right, back on the app, go back to the monitor and we're at 57%, but check it out. We're now charging with 1000 watts. <laughs> All right, check it out. The sun is out right now. You can hear the inverter running, so we're using a lot of power inside the house, but we are charging and we're putting in 2,600 watts into the house right now. That is pretty good, right? I was saying about 3,000 watts, so we're using a bit in the house and we're charging a bit. It's going good. And check it out, we're already up to 59%. We really want to thank Battleborn Batteries for partnering with us in this project. And guys, I will put links to everything that we've talked about in this video down in the description below. Go ahead and check out Battleborn Batteries. See if that's something that might not work for your off-grid situation, whether it be an RV, a cabin like ours, or even outboard trolling motor. Whatever you need a lead-acid battery for, you can do with these bad boys right here. You can do it a lot better and a lot more efficiently with these guys. If you want to see what else is going on here in our homestead, there is a video right over there you can go ahead and check out. Otherwise, I hope you have a really great day. Keep smiling, and I will see you over in that video in just a second.